Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> You sound like, what's the guy from Over the Garden Wall? Jason Funderburker? Yeah, Jason <laughs> Hey, Sarah. <laughs> I'm dropped off all the things I love. I can need a traffic jam to keep in touch. I can't focus on the words unless my hands are busy. I can't give up on the world or I will leave this city And it's way too broad what I'm trying to say But I'll write it down and let it go And it's hard to know all the words I need To explain my heart in a single note Hello and welcome to Way Too Broad, a show and tell program for really, really excitable grown-ups I'm Hannah, and my voice just cracked, and these are my co-hosts, Aaron and Ben. Hi, Aaron. Hello. (laughs) Hi, Hannah. Hi, Ben. Hi, Hannah. (laughs) Hi, Aaron. (laughs) I guess I'll have to use that for the cold open, so anyone knows what you're talking about. No. Well, forced your hand. Forced your hand. (laughs) <laughs> better better if unexplained mm-hmm. um well hello welcome back we welcome are back. actually doing what two weeks in a row uh, this maybe three weeks in a row at this point it's felt Do- like like it's been a month again a week that I lasted know. a month once again I, once again I know. I know do you guys have a long weekend this weekend yeah yeah Me? and same we have we have mlk day off but then we also took that friday off which i didn't remember I was just reviewing my work calendar and I'm like, Molly, why do I have Friday off? Do we, are we doing something on Friday? And she was like, Oh, I just took it off. Mm-hmm. And you must have taken it off when I told you. Wow. So that's, that's pretty sweet. Hey, and I also took think- Friday off. Wow, me yeah. too. What? For real? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Friday club. Well, we could have recorded this afternoon. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. next Friday. Friday. Oh, I'm sorry. I took today off. I missed ben, take next Friday off. I it, didn't hear ben. the first part of the Snentons. Ben's, God damn it, Ben's ben. in Friday Club, too. <laughs> I guess. But that means we have a three-day work week yeah. next week. And mm-hmm. two long weekends in a row, which mm-hmm. is sweet. Yep. And you know what? I actually had a reason for taking next Friday off. And it's because I'm actually finally getting that tattoo on my arm. Of hey. Jack. Yeah. I I contacted the tattoo artist because it's a whole day thing because she's three hours away from me. So I'm going to have to drive down and um, spend however many hours in the chair and then drive home. You know how traveling works. And so I <laughs> <laughs> so I, I knew I was going to have to take the day off. And I was like, let me make sure that they're open because everybody is having this Omicron surge right now. And I am, you know, vaxxed and boosted. And I know a lot of tattoo places are taking – lots of precautions but i wasn't sure about this particular place so i emailed her to ask her and um she said yes that it's it's appointment only so there's not a lot of people in there she wears two surgical masks when she does her tattoos everybody who works there wears masks she's vaxxed and boosted and everything so i feel like it's not not a risk but i feel a lot better about keeping the appointment so awesome yeah 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 is this gonna be one session tattoo um, it, we're only planning on one session right now. Um, but we'll just have to see. I mean, part of, I, from my understanding, some of that depends on like my own pain tolerance and some of it mm-hmm. depends on like how much she can get done mm-hmm. and stuff. But, uh, but basically we said your, like, how good your blood is, how good your blood is. So, so we said we'll plan for one, good but blood. then like if we need to have a second one, then we'll schedule it at that time. So great. Mm-hmm. Is this your first tattoo? Yes. Awesome. How are you feeling? I'm excited. That's amazing. I feel like I'm maybe a little overconfident about my pain tolerance because I'm like, I think it'll be fine. I'm not worried about like, I, I'm not worried about it being too painful in the chair. Like, I'm not worried about flinching. I'm not. And then, I, and then I'm like, why am I not worried about that? Like, what evidence do I have? <laughs> really none. Like, <laughs> you know, Kylie was running into that when she was planning on doing the tattoo in february mm-hmm. uh, which we've since canceled because it's or rescheduled because it's in 
Canada. Canada. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, because the tattoo artist, when she like first sent her the idea, was like, "We can't listen. We can do this, but I'm just letting you know that the area you like, she was going to do a wrap around her whole like shin, mm-hmm. and the two artists, mm. the tattoo artist, was suggesting maybe doing like just the back half." around mm-hmm. the back first and then coming for another mm-hmm. session later because the front of the shin can apparently be very painful. And then we were like looking up what the most painful places to get tattooed are and they were, and everything was like, it depends on your pain tolerance. And I was like, how does anyone know their pain tolerance? Mm-hmm. I know my pain tolerance and it's not, no, no pain. Thank you. <laughs> not good. Not good. <laughs> like, I don't know. And also, like, what's the difference between, like, tolerance and, like, how much pain do you have to be in for you to, like, whine about it? Because, like, I will whine at the slightest bit of pain. But, like, I can tolerate a lot. Like, I, I'm, i like, a person who kind of hates to take painkillers. So I'll, like, have a headache for, mm-hmm. like, a whole day and then be like, wait, oh why God. am I doing this to myself? Oh, my and, like, God, me. Why, fucking why? Do, why do you hate to take painkillers? <laughs> I just no do. reason. Yeah, no reason. <laughs> wow. Absolutely no reason. That's so I take them instantly. Just like won't. At, at the at the just won't at the sign of a headache. I take Tylenol like immediately. Yeah, yeah. I know some people who have like someone else has a headache. They'll take some pain. <laughs> I, I'm just like sometimes it's just like uh I don't know. That's just a lot to swallow That's right now. So yeah, it feels weird. like a big decision. So I'm yeah. gonna just <laughs> sit on it. For a while. I know. There's no good reason. Wow. Absolutely, Hannah. I'm 100% the same way. Literally the other day, headache all day long. And before bed, before bed, I took some painkillers. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know what? I'm usually like, okay, if it's like, if it's like close to bedtime, then I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I could take a painkiller now or I could try to fall asleep and then it'll probably be gone by the morning. It's so and then hard usually to fall it asleep is. with a headache though. Yeah. Well, I do. I'm really good at falling asleep. Me too. <laughs> I and, still know with that. And then I woke up, and then I w- sometimes you wake up the next morning, and it's still there, and you're like, ah, oh, fuck it, I guess I'll take some drugs. It's like it's what? Like, the f- I don't the understand. The timing, this at all. the timing never feels right. It's like the timing never feels. Right. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I just the timing that's what for I mean. The pain to go away. <laughs> the ti- pain kill- to take the painkillers. It just never feels it like a good. Like, like the timing is not good. It's like you know how when. <laughs> Whenever you want a baked potato, it's too late to make a baked potato. Yeah, like, it's like that. Okay, but it takes a long time to make a baked potato. But then you're like, "Am I? It's gonna take like at least half an hour for this to kick in." So, <laughs> <laughs> so you want to just be, continue to be in pain indefinitely? Yeah. No, absolutely not. We're not saying it's rational. We're saying it's what happens. Ben. Yeah. 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 Wow. That's wild. I, I do. I, we do need to um, tell each other while we're drinking. But I, I yeah. will say this: um, the exception is menstrual cramps, which I will mm-hmm. take a, yeah. a medication, like the most medication that I can take the moment they start to appear. Absolutely um, same. Because I've been burned too many times on that front. Yes. But then, like, what is that? Like, also, that's the other thing. I'm like, okay, maybe my pain tolerance is very good because I've had extremely painful cramps for like over half my life. Mm-hmm. But like. Does that extend to what it feels to have tiny needles mm-hmm. stuck into your skin? I have no mm-hmm. fucking idea. I have no mm-hmm. clue. Mm-hmm. So, whatever. I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be great, and I'm very excited about it. And she yeah. seems cool as hell, so I'm excited to meet Fuck her. yes. Yeah. Fuck yes. I really wanted a, a woman tattoo artist and someone who I could tell actually liked cats. So, mm-hmm. I, I got all of that. Love that. Her. Yeah. Love it. All right, what are we? Air Ben, what are you drinking? <laughs> Air Ben. Air <Yeah>, Ben. <laughs> Water. Air Ben is the sequel to Air Bud <laughs> <laughs> that nobody asked I'm for. Making my making water. No, I'm not. Doing that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking water. That's it. Just water. Did you make it? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, I am next, and I will tell you what I'm drinking. But let me just also tell you. Speaking <laughs> of water. Yesterday, like you're not going to tell us. I will tell you what I'm drinking, but <laughs> um, yesterday they were doing some work on a fire hydrant near our house, and our water never turned off, but it did get extremely slow. And then when it came back on, it was brown, like chocolate, dark, oh, like hot chocolate, no. like brown, brown, like brown, chocolate dark, <laughs> chocolate dark. <laughs> it was brown, like chocolate dark, like chocolate, comma took- dark. 
took a long time for it to fucking stop. A being long, brown. long, longer time. Yeah, and I hated it. So you know. Yeah, we've had that. They when they've done sometimes they do work on like the. Yeah, but sometimes nearby. they flush the hydrants Ugh. or whatever. But this was the worst I've ever seen. But they were working on Ugh. it like all day, so I feel like they just knocked a lot of stuff loose. Do you drink disgusting. tap water? Uh, no. But, well, we drink filtered tap water, but we couldn't okay. even put it into the filter. I'm so. also generally not opposed to drinking tap water. I mean, I'll drink I'll like a little bit here and there. I I tend not to anymore. I used to well, be a tap water drinker. Well, this brown. To- this chocolate comma dark situation <laughs> it made me feel icky about it i drink yeah, but then it gets tap clean. water but it's like well water mm. isn't that yeah, worse no. well it, water it can be it's, well, it's it got just... a lot of vitamins and minerals in it i thought it had like a lot of bacteria and shit from standing well, like, around ooh, it ooh, can ooh, ooh. it can but you don't you get it tested for that vitamins ooh. and minerals and minerals <laughs> that was that, was that what, I'm sorry, was that what the ooh ooh was about? Yeah. Was that you thought of minerals? <laughs> yeah. Cool. It's, it's kind of like a spoonerism, but with the vowel sound. It's it's nice. Oh, okay. I nice, like Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we tested our <laughs> we tested our well water before we moved in, and they actually did have to like Treat sanitize it? it or something. But it should be good. I mean, I drink it full time. <laughs> I've drank it full time for like five years. It's four my or five job. Years. To drink yeah. this water. I drink. I drink this water full time. I make it actually. So. <laughs> oh wow, that's amazing. Um, would you like to know what I'm drinking? No. Yes. I mean, yes. We got a little bit distracted there. I have a orange mango spindrift. Mm. Delicious, and finally, once again. I have a mango spindrift spiked. Hey. Which I need to open. Oh, and I need to light the podcast candle. Oh, Aaron, boy. Tell me what you're drinking while I light the podcast candle. Okay, I'm drinking a rum and tropical juices. Oh. Again. Again. Delicious. And I'm drinking well water. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Is that gross? Water is good for you. <laughs> I hate water famously. Do you like the mango spindrift hard seltzer flavor? I do like it. Maybe best of oh, all okay. the flavors. Cool. I I I don't love it in general, which I think we covered mm-hmm. the last time that. That I had this. Like, this is from the same batch as that first one. This, like, you can see how often I drink them. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have a question about hard mm-hmm. seltzer in general. Okay. Do you know if it's, like, they carbonate an alcohol, or do they mix seltzer and some kind of alcohol? I don't know. My guess... My, I don't know. But I would wonder if they mixed... The alcohol in some with some water, and then carbonated the whole thing, like a like a fucking soda stream. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like from like from Wikipedia, stream. it says it's a type of drink containing seltzer, alcohol, and often fruit flavorings, which to me implies mm-hmm. it is you just take some seltzer and mix some alcohol in. But I feel like that would Tastes like flatten. watered, watered down. Yeah, like flattened seltzer. Yeah, I feel like you'd have to carbonate the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah, yeah. It, Wait, it does. Chew high is hard seltzer. That is how it's listed on here. Carbonated water is the first ingredient for whatever that's worth. What? I don't Literally, know what that is, Ben. Chew high is a. It's a Japanese um, canned alcoholic drink. That's like a mix of soju and carbonated water and and. Uh, um, oh. And or so it's shochu, which I think is soju, basically. Is it soju? I don't fucking know. Um, it's like a rice alcohol, I think, or a barley right? <laughs> rice or barley alcohol. Um, and we drank it all the time when we were in Japan. Hmm. Hmm. And I didn't even Sounds know it was tasty. technically classified as a hard seltzer, but I guess it is. Yeah. Huh. Um, well, we got emails and voicemails that you're oh. going to have to play for us. My goodness. What? 
What a beautiful day. I'm looking. It's a beautiful day. (laughs) (laughs) Four of these are not from real people. Um, Aaron, I don't know if I'm logged into the thingy. Do you want to read maybe the first one from Samantha? Yes. So this one's from Samantha G. This is non-coworker Sam. Uh, TikTok Sam. This is TikTok Sam. Mm -hmm. That's right. Sam says, hi, guys. Oh, the the subject of this one is a random assortment of feedback. Mm -hmm. Hi, guys. This one's going to be a bit long and rambling. So if you don't want to read, if you don't want the whole thing on pod, feel free to cut it off at any point. No. Oh, no. We're going to read the whole thing. (laughs) And the follow up. (laughs) <laughs> and the follow-up. Firstly, I just wanted to let you know I've been binging through your backlog lately, and I should finally be caught up with all your episodes in the next week or two. That is extremely exciting, Samantha. <laughs> Secondly, I played Inscription, and it was phenomenal. Aaron, if you have uh, yes. an- any interest in the game at all, I highly recommend you find a way to play it, because I agree with Hannah and Ben that it seems unlikely it will ever come to the Switch due to a few mechanics that appear. Mm-hmm. All right. Sam, I uh, look forward to the computer that you'll be purchasing for me. I'll be on the look out in the mail. JK. <laughs> Third thing, Cookie Clicker. I played that game back in 2013, not long after it had been made, and it is still very much had an end point. It consumed my life for the few days, possibly a week, that it took to complete. Thinking mm-hmm. about that also brought me such vivid nostalgia from being in college and the dramatically different place I was in my life back then. Back then, I was still a physics major before I switched uh, before I switched it to metal working and jewelry design. I still miss those days sometimes. I loved learning about physics. I just didn't love doing it. Mm. Anyway, tangent aside, if you ever find yourself getting bored with Cookie Clicker, I want to recommend Kitten's Game. Ooh. It's also an idle game, and it starts off as a clicker but evolves into a more resource management and has far more complexity than Cookie Clicker. <laughs> Just a be dark warned. Dark Souls of incremental gaming is what the page <laughs> <laughs> <it> says. <laughs> Ooh. Just be warned that game can be a bit of a mind virus. Just be warned that game can be a bit of a mind virus and can become very consuming. I loved it, but also when my game glitched and I lost my data, I did feel it. I, it did feel like a bit like being set free. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> the rum and tropical juices is going straight to my head. <laughs> Finally, Ben talked about how the previous week felt like a month and also being high made me want to share an amusing anecdote from being from my very long start to the year about how I accidentally ended up very high while at work. <laughs> so a bit of background, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia last year and have been struggling to find a medication that works. Just before the holidays, the one I was on seemed to be causing some concerning side effects, so I had to stop taking it. Wednesday of last week, I see my doctor, and she recommend I start taking pregabalin, which she assures me is extremely similar to the other drug I had tried that gave me almost no side effects, but didn't do enough for the pain. The first red flag was when I go to pick up the prescription, I need to present my ID. Turns out this Hmm. drug is a controlled substance, and the bottle is, like, plastered with warning labels. Mildly concerning, but I take my first dose in the evening and go to bed. Next morning, I get up, take dose number two, glance down at my phone for just a second, and then it's just 40 minutes later. (laughs) Oh, my God. Fucking God. Whoa. That moment, I sh- that moment should have been my signal to just stay home, but my only thought is I'm going to be late, and I rush to get ready and off to work. I make it to work safely, but then things start to get weird. My body feels like it's not mine, and I'm just watching it do things rather than doing them myself. I can't drive home like this, so I think it's okay to just put, to put some, to, ju- sorry. So I think, okay, just put some music on, try to focus, I can get through this. As soon as I turn the music on, my head starts involuntarily bobbing along. I'm sliding my wheelie chair back and forth, spinning around. Okay, wheelie chair is a distraction. Just stand up. I don't need to sit to work. But I I just cannot stand still. I'm bouncing up and down, swaying from side to side. My brain is just begging me to keep working while my body is off in its own little world having a little dissociative dance party. At this point, I'm also trying not to start laughing like a mad woman, because as frustrating as it all was, it was also very funny, and I was just grateful none of my coworkers were around to watch me lose my mind. Eventually, it settles down, and I just feel really tired for a few hours until it wears off enough for me to go home. 
I did not continue to take that medication, <laughs> but that day really feels like a great analogy to the year thus far. It's kind of a mess, but I'm but I'm just vibing and pushing. Through. Okay, that's all I've got. I hope your lives have been less chaotic than mine is currently. Sam. Wow. <laughs> Damn. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to hear that you are dealing with um, fibromyalgia. That sucks. Yeah. But that sounds like a very scary and disturbing experience, especially like feeling like your body isn't yours and yeah. isn't under your control and not being home. That sounds it's, terrifying. It sounds like a dream, like a bad dream. Like, like it, a bad dream. Especially the, like, actually all the way through, but like, I've definitely had dreams where I had that exact same thing happen where it's like, I, I pause for a moment to look at my phone and then it's 40 minutes later. I'm like, yeah. I, I don't even consider why I just, I'm like, I'm going to be late for work. Like, yeah, but, uh, but that was real. Well, glad you're safe. Glad yeah. that you're not taking that med anymore, but I hope you do find something that works for you. Yeah. And I will check right. out kittens game probably. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks for that. All right. Er, Hannah, are you in? Do you want to read the second one? Uh, yeah. Or Ben or Ben. Ben, well, do you wanna let's let's see what this voicemail is first, maybe? Okay. We got and three of them. No, we don't. Oh, okay. I see the email three times. Yeah, well you see how the first two say new missed call? Yeah. Uh so those are not voicemails. Which is Okay. It's <laughs> making me wonder if this one is a real voicemail, but we're gonna see. Here we go. Pressing play now. No. No. <laughs> no. No. Well, yeah, I guess we didn't get any transcription, so that no. should have been our first clue. Oh, that's weird. No. No. Okay, but... <laughs> no. No. Okay, but you can't really hear it, but it sounds like someone... Um, It sounds like uh, someone's sitting near a road. Like, there wasn't any no. speaking, <laughs> but there was, like, 15 <laughs> seconds of silence, and I could hear distant cars. So, that's interesting. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, I hear that. It's kind of weird. No, or no, it sounds like someone breathing. <gasps> that's that's worse. Oh my god! All right, well now I have to listen to. It sounds like someone going. <sighs> yeah, I heard that. I don't like that at all. Well, we don't like that. <laughs> no, thank you for that. <laughs> what the fuck? <sighs> We don't like that. No, we don't like that. Can we see what number it was from? Wait, was that? Hold on. Hold on. Can one of you... I almost said, can one of you shut up? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, sorry, bud. Oh, I scared Carl. He was trying to cuddle. Are you listening to it? What are you doing? Uh, Yeah, hold on. I'm trying to, but Carl is being a lot right now. What the fuck? (laughs) It's weird, right? Wow, I do not like that. We don't like it. Don't like it. Como, are you cuddling or not, bud? It's from a phone from number in, in Massachusetts, so. Yeah, yeah. That's a Boston area code. Yeah, don't. All right, when are you read our second legitimate email? Okay. All right. F- from TikTok Sam, uh, non-work Sam. Sorry to add, uh, it says episode 58 regarding is ginger spicy. Oh, wow. Oh, Digging shit. up an old. This old chestnut. <laughs> Okay. Sorry to add more after my already long email. No need to apologize. But I have some important information concerning your discussion about the spiciness of ginger that may shift your opinions. Ben described ginger as having the sensation of spicy, but not the flavor. And you all seem to agree with that sentiment. I regret to inform (laughs) you that agreeing to that is unknowingly admitting that ginger is spicy. (laughs) You see, the thing about spicy is that it definitionally is a sensation, not a flavor. Mm. Flavors activate your taste buds, but spicy doesn't do that. Instead, it activates your pain receptors, creating that tingly, burning Mm -hmm. sensation. So it's impossible for a food to have the sensation of spicy, but not the flavor, because it's all sensation. (laughs) If it feels spicy, then it is, regardless of the flavor profile or whether the sensation lingers. Now, of course, you're welcome to disagree with whether the feeling is the same, but I would definitely describe the sensation of a strong hit of ginger as a warm burning. So I'm firmly in the ginger is spicy camp. Okay, Sam. Sam. (laughs) But Sam, can, Sam, could you could you then describe like why it doesn't taste spicy though? Yeah, yeah. Counterpoint, point Dexter. Ginger yeah. isn't spicy. <laughs> but like, 
like, if it was spicy, like, wouldn't it taste spicy? You know yeah. what I mean? Come on, come on, bud. What are you doing? <laughs> Counterpoint. Let me find the name of that email. Point I mean, that, um... <laughs> The name of that, uh, what is that, 53? 50, 58? 58. Um, I like, like, I hear you. I think you are technically correct, but also, like, ginger isn't spicy. Like, I can't in good faith say okay. ginger is spicy. Well, it is, but it, like, doesn't, it isn't spicy. But it's spicy, not. It doesn't so, taste like, spicy. Campy. Uh, episode 85, put Actually, that mean, on happy. a t-shirt and smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say 85? Did I say 85? What was it? 58? Oh. 58. <laughs> oh, well, I'm fucking dyslexic. <laughs> That's a great title, though. <laughs> Put that on a t-shirt and smoke it. Episode, okay. Okay. Episode 58, Pedantic by Nature. So, a little on the nose there, Sam. <laughs> um, no, I I mean, I'm, I'm happy to say ginger is spicy, but it doesn't taste spicy. I'm not happy about any of this. So I for- were you in the t- it tastes spicy that it is spicy camp? No, I'm firmly in the ginger's not spicy camp, and I don't know how to get out of it because, listen, Sam, everything that you've said makes sense, and I understand. And also, I appreciate you listening to our back catalog. Like, holy shit, it's did beautiful. I ever think I'd hear about? What are you gonna do next? Tell us whether ghosts or zombies are scarier. Please actually do. Send us an email and let us know um, what's scarier. Let us know if you think zombies are spicy. <laughs> <laughs> do they taste spicy or do they just feel spicy? They definitely look spicy. <laughs> <laughs> we are playing a um, space themed um, tabletop RPG game with friends of ours right now, Ian and me. He's DMing it. And actually, it's starts with that number. It's the same one that, that we all play oh, for fine. a little bit. And yeah. Ian's current story has like strong zombie overtones to it. And mm. I'm like, I'm, I feel like personally attacked. <laughs> <laughs> that voicemail we got had strong zombie overtones yeah, to it. Yeah, it did. It did. Yeah. I didn't um, love it. Do you, in, question, in your <clears throat> tabletop RPG, do you have a spaceship called the Fortunate Finger, like we did? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> did we name that? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I think it, remember. I, I think it had, um, like, part of its name obscured, and so it was just, like, the Fortunate <laughs> F something, and then we... <laughs> yeah, and we yeah. decided to call <laughs> That's right. the Fortunate Finger. <laughs> uh, Hold on. I, I need to just... Search something real quick. Is ginger spicy? <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Sam, for the yeah. emails. Really appreciate it. And appreciate listening to the back catalog. Love it. Keep keep sending your thoughts yeah. as you have them. It's fun. I like it. Um, we'll read it. And them. that goes for any of you listeners. Let us know. We'll 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 love to hear from you. Mm-hmm. Um Okay, other upfronts. I bought a tushy uh, bidet. Hell yes. But here's the thing. I don't know if it's going to fit on my toilet. I, like, Uh-oh. I like measured it and it seemed like it would. But and right now what I'm actually waiting on is an extension cord for the. <laughs> it seemed like it, it would. It seemed like it would. <laughs> Did you measure it or That's not? not how measuring works. <laughs> Well, it was like, it was like the minimum was 16.5 inches, right? For a round toilet seat. And it, it was like kind of looking like 16, but maybe 16 and a half. <laughs> looking like 16. That's also not how measuring. Well, works. I didn't want to take the whole, the whole seat off to measure from the holes, you know? So it was just kind of like eyeballing it. <laughs> <laughs> also not how measuring works. <laughs> So you didn't measure it. I yeah. did measure it, but I also, but I like had to estimate where the where the holes were. Did you hold the ruler up like three feet away and no. just sort of, like, line it up and see if it looked so good? No, no, no. So I I'm, we're, we need to get an extension cord um, first, but then also I don't know if it's gonna fit. Well, I might have to return it and get a less uh, fancy no, no, no. one. So we'll see, we'll see. It's just an old toilet. Maybe we need to just get a new toilet instead. (laughs) We can Mm -hmm. put the seat right on it. Um, But yeah. It's a good idea. I'm going to get a bidet one way or another. Okay. We're going to. One way. Man, it's nice. (laughs) Week two. Still loving it. (laughs) I'm here to say that that, that, like heated seat. Sometimes 
you don't want to leave. <laughs> it's these cold winter's days. <laughs> <laughs> these cold winter's days. Yeah, it's going to get below zero tonight. Oof. We might yeah. get nine inches of snow this weekend. Whoa, oh, yeah, there's going to be a big snowstorm. Snowstorm, oh, more like that. Snow we keep a power. <laughs> snowstorm. <laughs> All right. Do we have other upfronts? You didn't want to keep talking about Schnushter? Schnushter. 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 Oh my god. Wow, it's going to be so fucking cold tomorrow, dude. What the hell? Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> ben, do you want to maybe tell us your obsession and then we could do that? Oh, fuck. Ben, what the fuck? I don't have, have much one. of an obsession today. Oh, it's hold so- on. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I forgot. Ben, you want to tell us your obsession? Hold on! <laughs> I forgot. I think I saved this comment. I started, but I don't think that I uh, read it out. So I just want to do <laughs> That's really important. It's from, um, it's a comment on our YouTube video, um, from uh, number 186. I'm drinking tea, but open for more. And the, <laughs> and the, the comment is from Dan Rodriguez Music. Thanks for listening, Dan. And it says, Thanks for uploading. If you have a minute, I've been recording some original acoustic songs. As a fellow music fan, I'd love oh. if you would check it out. It's on my channel. Hope you like it. So, wow, thanks, I am Dan. a music fan. Yeah. Me, how, how did, did you, you know? know? He must be a true listener. <laughs> <laughs> He's been going through the back catalog and <laughs> heard us talk about music. <laughs> That's all. Go, go ahead, Ben. Great. That was a really good thing to interrupt me for. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, I so yeah, my obsession is a game that I didn't play. Oh, um, and that I watched Kylie play, but only the second half of it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> but listen, it was really, it's a really cute game, and it was really uh enjoyable. Like I really genuinely looked forward to like after work sitting down and watching her play the rest of the game. Um it's called Eastward. Oh, I've heard about that. Yeah, it's it's published, not developed, but published by the same company Chucklefish that publishes Stardew Valley. Chucklefish. Um, and it's also like a pixel art game. <laughs> <laughs> Are you good? Thanks. Um, <laughs> well, excuse me. I just clarified in chat if it was East Word, W O R D, or East War. <laughs> <laughs> I, generally, I mean, this is no, that's not totally fair. Generally, it's the one that's a word. Yeah. <laughs> or unless it's a fucking word game, Ben. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Um, it's not a word game, it's a game. It's a ward where, game. See, now this is going to be tricky because... <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be tricky because I did not watch the first part of the game. <laughs> so, and Kylie explained it, like, the premise to me, but now that's, this is going to be secondhand through Kylie, and I refuse is to Kylie look it up available? to assist Quick this. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 shh. No, no, no. This okay. is what we're doing. All right. 10-4. <laughs> we have it on the record. Do you, you're refusing to look anything up to help you. So if Correct. Ben gets anything wrong, Correct. Aaron and I are not culpable. Okay. This is this is like Jeopardy format. He's got the second half and needs to the first half. That's not- Kylie, Kylie has just texted me and said, this is going to be a shit show. I have to listen to this now, huh? <laughs> Um, I, yeah, I'm not going to read, I don't want her to help me, so I'm not going to read her messages anymore. Um, (laughs) Ben's doing this episode on hard mode. (laughs) Is you play as a duo of people, John and Sam. John is like this old, uh, not old, (laughs) he's like middle-aged dude, um, who fights with a pan, which is really fun, because for the whole game, you fight with a pan. Oh my god, I thought he was saying pen in like a southern way. Sorry. Pan. I got it. I got it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And he also uses 
uh, other a pen lo- like long range weapons and bombs, but like his main melee weapon is always a pan. Fun, um, love it. Yeah, it's always a pun. Uh, and then <laughs> Sam is a girl with really long white hair that he he's like a miner in the beginning of the game, and he finds her in like this underground factory thing that it's like mysterious fac- factory with like these pods that have uh they're like these orange pods in them and she finds her in one of them hmm. um and she has like mysterious powers hmm. and then the main the the main premise overall premise of the game is like it's it's post-apocalyptic hmm. post apocalyptic wow hard word to say <laughs> post-apocalyptic uh-huh. jeez <laughs> um jeez and i like up at the at the start of the game, you start in an underground civilization where you like most hu- most humans are underground. <laughs> no, I know, I know some things. She did she explained a lot of the game to me. Yeah, it's, I know yeah, some good th- th- It's under most humans are living underground, and a lot of them like don't even believe there are humans on the surface anymore. Mm. Um, but spoilers, there are, and the surface has become unsafe to live in because of this thing called the miasma which is like oh from this... final fantasy which one's that from which final fantasy is that from uh it's the it's very repetitive um i feel 13? like mom played it no, no it's, not uh, it's not it's not uh, like final fantasy 8 it's not one of the numbered ones it's like a spin-off one it's like, oh crystal chronicles yeah that's it that's it yeah except in that miasma was more of like a I mean, it's Miasma was more of the traditional thing where it's kind of just like this nebulous cloud of... Yeah. Which is kind of what it is in Eastward, except it, like, sp- spawns little monsters and, like, has more, like, a monster vibe. Um, mm. But, yeah, and then there's, like, some shit where Sam has, like, uh, a... Like, sh- periodically, she'll sort of, like, switch gears and you'll there's, like, an evil side of her that is hmm. is usually not out that seems to have some connection to the miasma hmm. huh. um and then also some characters in the game usually like villains refer to her as mother hmm. oh. and like recognize her oh my so that's like a thing low low key creepy mm. yeah it's a little bit but it, i mean it's also like yeah it, it is um but she's really uh Cute. A great character. She's adorable. She She's makes like so, so many cute facial expressions and the animations for them she does things are so great. Um she's just like such a lovable character. John never talks. She's the only one who ever talks. Um mm. but they build up like a a father daughter type bond. It's like very last of us y in that way. Mm. Um, especially like the final sequence because there's like a whole thing. This is now spoilers, but uh, there's <laughs> okay, a part spoilers, where like, you, everyone. You, yeah, there's a part where you get separated from Sam, which I feel like is not surprising for this kind of game where like you play with a partner the whole time. There's a part where mm. you get separated and like John is trying to save her, and it's like very much now it's spoilers. End of Last of Us, very much end of the Last of Us Part One vibes, mm. um, where you're like Joel is like desperately racing to save uh, Ellie when they get separated at the end. So I like that part of it. Um, and a lot of the characters are really great. I think the, the main point of like um, negative feedback that Kylie had for the game and that I saw a little bit of was um, there's sort of like, a, there's like a, a weird amount of like baked in misogyny in the humor of the game and like a lot of the dialogue interactions with just like random NPCs or like, I I, I don't know, just like, there's just like several like weird things where it's like, why did that have to be there as part of this Uh game? Where like, otherwise like one of the main, two of the main characters, like of like the very important main characters are a queer couple, like to a lesbian couple. And it's like, that's great. That's awesome. Why did you leave all the weird, like, Mm-hmm. like negative gender stereotype mm-hmm. stuff in mm-hmm. it was it's just a strange choice um but apart from that it's a very very cool game and you are uh from what i can tell like the main thing you're trying to do is kind of solve the the you're just trying to like help people on the surface and then also like solve the mystery of whatever the fuck is going on with sam and her whole like connection huh. to me as and everything um it gets real weird and timey-wimey by the end. Nice. 
Love that. Um, yeah, I, I'm still trying to like figure out what the ending even meant. <laughs> well, why don't you describe it to us in detail and then we can help you. <laughs> uh, can I you don't talk even... to me about what is timey wimey like TM? Like, can you talk to me about what that means? Oh, that's a Doctor Who reference. Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, gotcha. He said, because he, what is it? He says people think of time as linear, but it's more like a wibbly wobbly ball of timey wimey stuff. Yeah, it's like the Jeremy um, Baramy. Yeah, it's like yeah. Jeremy Baramy. Aaron, you know that one. What's that? The from? Good Place. It's ringing a bell. I haven't watched the last season. Of I think, it's, I the think good it's place. in the second or third. I season. think it's in the second yeah. season. That's time, time. They describe they describe time as it's not Baramy. linear. It's 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 very nonlinear and ends up being shaped like it spells out Jeremy Baramy. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great scene. Oh, it's so good. It's sec- I like it's that show season. a lot, but it's just okay. Okay, cool, cool. Um, Is that the same episode as the Time Knife? No, that's in the first season, I think. Oh yeah, Isn't that? but the, but but the or maybe it's no, maybe it's not. But I remember it's in the second season because there's a dot over the eye in Jeremy Baramy and the like. <laughs> yes. uh, Chidi asks what that is. And they're like, that's t- Tuesdays, July, da, 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 and sometimes never. Yes, yeah, sometimes. And, and then Chidi's like, this broke me. And then that leads directly into the scene where he's like making chili with peeps in it and M&M's <laughs> in his classroom. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> this is all ringing a bell. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes never. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, Eastward is really cool, and apart from a couple of unfortunate things, very good and very cool characters that I enjoyed watching Kylie interact with <laughs> and hearing about how much fun she had playing the game. It also has a lot of uh, one of the main. You can like um, separate John and Sam. So like a lot of or when you're in special areas, it's like a lot of the puzzles center around like separating them to like have her flip a switch or something in an area that she only she can get to and then like whatever and it's uh the puzzles are really fun mm. nice even cool. from a viewer perspective <laughs> they were fun to look at he's really you're you don't have to go so hard on that angle then. <laughs> i didn't play it okay <laughs> <laughs> i'm really and surprised. this is on the switch <laughs> it is on the switch it's also on pc i think Cool. Which Aaron you're gonna get right, so you can play Inscription. <laughs> That's right. I'm gonna get a full. I'm gonna get a full PC. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> I have no plans to get a PC. <laughs> Hell I, yeah! Can't wait. I can send Let you a link know. to where we got Vengeance if you want to get your own Vengeance. I'll do that. <laughs> I'll send you a link. <laughs> okay. I'll buy like I'll buy an expensive bidet, but I won't buy a computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly priorities exactly well cool i i you know despite learning about it like second or third hand um i i i would like to play that you've successfully convinced me that that's an interesting game ben i have a question has kylie texted you i was wondering if she was eavesdropping and had any correction i'm surprised she didn't no, bust in the door no. honestly she did not Okay, great. I think I did great. I think you're yeah. lying, maybe. I'm not lying. Okay. <laughs> I don't lie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, should we pop into me now? No. Yes. yes Kylie, sorry. I keep saying the wrong thing. When you're when you <laughs> When you listen to this, feel free to s- send us an email or call us and tell us all the stuff <sighs> Ben got wrong. Kylie, correct the record. Just pretty much do a- call us and do anything except just breathe once into the phone. And- <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Oh, no. My. <laughs> do we know that wasn't Kylie? It was a Boston area code. I did. That's what I was Kylie. doing. I searched my contacts to see if they were in there, and they were not. So Kylie does not have a Boston area code. Mm. Yeah. Not to dox her or anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Okay, Hannah. Cool. My obsession is a show that I have not watched. Hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. 
Was I supposed to not do my obsession? <laughs> I, Wait, is it actually Hannah? I thought you were meaning. <laughs> it's, I've only watched like the first half of the first season. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Because I've actually done my obsession. <laughs> Weird. Homework's going to be interesting because we're going to be telling people to do something we haven't done. <laughs> yeah. Except me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all yeah. of us didn't even do our obsession. Isn't that weird? <laughs> um, yeah, so I have. Let me tell you that what ha- what ha- let me tell you what happened here. I <laughs> <laughs> um I have been getting a lot of videos on my for you page that are people making fun of the show Euphoria, and like specifically, um, they'll be like when. You go to Euphoria High School and then it'll change from like a normal ass outfit into like a incredibly revealing or like light up or something just crazy because people wear the craziest clothes on that show. And like I was aware of that, but I hadn't seen the show and it was just coming up over and over again. And I think it's because the second season just started or has been running recently. Yeah. Um, but I was like, you know, maybe I'll give this show a chance because uh, I need, st- you know, I need a new show. I wasn't really watching anything in particular. Um, so that's what I've been watching when I'm like hanging out with the cats in the cat room just to get them used to me and not play with them. And, um, I am, I'm liking it. I, I, so that's what I'm going to talk about euphoria. I'm going to talk about what I like about it so far. Um, with the caveat that I'm only four episodes in to the first season, which is about halfway through. It's an eight episodes (laughs) first season. I don't know how long the second season is. Um, it, quick question is a uh, for you page is that kind of similar to like the home page of YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's, cool. Just checking. It's, like basically there's only two screens on TikTok. Um there's like your for you page and your following like feed and so most people unless they're specifically like only looking Not on TikTok. Uh-oh. Yeah, most people, unless they're specifically looking to only watch videos from people they follow, or like searching things up, um, will be will spend most of their time on the for you page. Like you open up the app and it just immediately starts playing a video and is on your for you page by default. So that's what that is for those of you who are not on TikTok. And it is cool. that's like when people talk about the algorithm being hyper specific and stuff. Like that's what they're talking about is like it's serving you up yeah. things that it thinks you'll like and it thinks you'll like them for. Who knows how many reasons, but it's like usually right. So, Mm -hmm. um, so I just figured if my for you page thinks that I might like you for you, I'm going to watch it. So (laughs) I, so I, I watched it and I like it. So, so here's what I like about it. Um, it's, uh, it's really well made. Um, it's incredibly like well reviewed. Like if you look at the, sort of critical like the percentages on like rotten tomatoes and stuff it's extremely fresh um zendaya is amazing in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um she is what? Michi. i don't get that one. Oh my god what ron james is guangi uh, you haven't seen zendaya is michi you gotta play no. that you gotta play that no yeah you gotta play that for aaron and okay. me. Can you just find it and then yeah, share yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing okay. it. I'm doing okay. it. I'm he knows the drill. He knows the drill. <laughs> oh, my God. What? Oh, my God. I can't. God. I'm so pleased I get to show you this. You know Gabe Gundacker, Aaron? Does that name sound familiar? Yeah. Okay. It's, yeah, yeah. It's uh, the coin star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today I was And the Bron James is Gwangi. <laughs> I have seen this. <laughs> I have seen this. I have seen this, but I didn't. I, I deeply didn't understand it at the time because I didn't know who or what Zendaya was. But now I really do, and so that's really beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. It's a full that circle moment. <laughs> yeah. Um, beautiful. But Zendaya, uh, uh, she is Michi. She's also extremely good in this role. 
Um, Are you going to drop that clip in where we were just watching it? Or what's your, this cl- the audio there? Maybe. What's your plan? Okay. <laughs> ben, if you have it open, could you send that link just so I don't have to search it up? Uh, no, Oops. it's fine. I won't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's okay. No, okay that's right. no, it's I'm easy good. to Google. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so it's a ba- so Zendaya plays the lead role, and I would say the co lead is an actress named Hunter. Um, I don't remember her last name. Uh, what's the name of this show? Euphoria. I need to see the cast real quick, please. I need to see the cast. It's a it's an ensemble um piece and maybe like it's more so by the end of the Schaefer, season. Hunter Schaefer. Hunter Schaefer, yeah. So those I would call them the two like main leads. And Shump, I think they're Shumper the ones paper. who have gotten like the most sort of critical acclaim <laughs> for their performances. But I think everybody's really great. Um uh but Zendaya plays a character named Rue who is a going into her junior year of high school when the show starts in some a fictional town in Southern California and she's just gotten back from rehab from uh she had right like at the beginning of the summer had uh OD'd and like almost died because she was oh, uh addicted to drugs just various drugs um and her sister found her and it was very traumatic for everyone involved and then she comes back and has like no intention of staying sober and so it's about it's like following her um her whole like life in high school as like a you know a troubled teen so to speak but she but it's got this really cool sort of way of um letting you get to know everybody with her as sort of an omniscient narrator but Mm. she calls herself an unreliable narrator in the first um episode um which i think is kind of interesting but she but then at the same time like she knows everyone's life story i mean i think that they also she's just known all these people for a long time because it's like a like a small town high school type thing um but it's really interesting the way that it's structured because by the time you get into like the third episode you you feel very like very connected um to like a lot of the people in the show i think they do a really good job of like making everyone like very three-dimensional and interesting um and mostly like even if they're kind of awful in some ways they're also like relatable and important to to other people that you care about in the show and like some Mm. not everyone but but like a lot of people you know i feel like it in a with weaker writing and weaker performances some of the people could could very much end up just being like the stock like mean girl or whatever but like they're not that at all um Mm -hmm. because it shows so many different parts of their life um, I will say if you are not someone who is really into like, you know, it's, it's HBO. So there's a lot of sex. There's like a lot of violence and a lot of it happens between or to like characters that are teenagers and high schoolers. Like mm-hmm. the actors are not, but it's not like mm-hmm. the, always the easiest thing to watch. Um, but it can also be like incredibly funny. Like it's, it's, it's a drama, but it, but it has like these like laugh, laugh out loud moments. Um, as well. And like I said, like just a lot of really compelling characters. Um, it's also got, uh, gay storylines, specifically like lesbian storylines. Um, nice. And, does it uh, have gray storylines? Definitely a lot of gray (laughs) storylines. And, (laughs) and I will say this, I w I was pretty impressed when I, so I, I just watched the first two episodes over again with Ian because he and I told him that I was liking it and, and he, you know, he thought he'd try it out too. So I went back. And I had been watching it on my phone, um, so on a very small screen and also, like, not paying attention. You know how I I was probably playing Cookie (laughs) Clicker and watching it on my phone. You you know how I am. (laughs) So so I was, on first watch, I was very impressed with the way that they handled the fact that um, Jules is the name of the other main character. Um, uh, She's trans. And they, it's, it's definitely, like, a big part of like her character and who she is and not something that they're like making a secret of at all. And that's always been like the case, but it wasn't, it's not like at the center of her storyline. When I first watched it, I didn't pick up on the fact that she was, um, that she was trans at all until like the beginning of the second episode. And I was like, wow, it's really cool how they're like, not like 
make like centering this as a thing. But then when I went back and watched the first episode, they actually like show her giving herself a, a shot that I think they show uh, the label is like estrogen or whatever. Like they, mm. they, they do kind of throw you a fair number of hints that I just kind of missed because they weren't like, <laughs> like audible. <laughs> So, <laughs> so it's a show that she hasn't watched, not because it hasn't been on, just because she's like, it's been on, she hasn't been watching it. But, but like, regardless, I think, again, that is like one of many areas where they could have like made that just all of who she is. And they absolutely did mm-hmm. not at all. Like, it's, uh, it, you know, it's a part of her identity, but it's not like, it's not uh, uh, the only thing her story is about. It's, it's not like mm-hmm. all, the only thing she has going on. Like uh, she's just a full, like three dimensional character as I think they all are, which I think is really great. Also after a quick Google, Hunter Schaefer is actually trans. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. We love to see it. Love to see it. We, we love to see it. We love to see trans character, trans actors playing trans characters. Mm-hmm. It's just baseline people. <laughs> baseline. It's, it's, just and it just makes sense you know Mm -hmm. um but yeah so i don't know if you're if you're okay with like you know getting a little uncomfortable sometimes i know people aren't always in the mood for that so i did want to like mention it's like not all fun and games or anything but (laughs) it's but i i'm really liking it and and i Mm -hmm. and the stories are the story um of the first season it seems like there's some there's a fair amount like i i don't know where it ends up like obviously but there's definitely like an overarching storyline to it throughout the whole season and it's not just like teen drama it's like it involves the the parents and and all kinds of interesting like intrigue and stuff so i'm into Mm. it i think it could go interesting places um cool yeah so and i'm I, i have high hopes for it because of how like the reviews are still good so people don't seem to say it dropped off or anything so I would. I'm gonna keep watching it. So you, you know, people could watch it too. And then start. Hmm. Start. Yeah. If you have it, start. Start watching it. So we'll watch it together. Or like Ooh. half watch it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Put it on, but like zone out you know yeah what, play cookie clicker play um kitten game or whatever what ha- what what's your cps these days oh boy buddy it's um 34.5 million oh ooh, you've been playing ben i uh come back t- i do like once a night i drop in and buy stuff That's nice mine is over a billion per second wow jeez yeah yeah what do you Twice. got Aaron? Oh, I haven't been playing. I'm at like 300, that, 361,000. Wow. <laughs> I think I'm not I know. I know. That's nothing. I know. It's literally Harry, you nothing. You might as well have said zero cookies. I know. I know. I know, Ben. <laughs> oh, my God. I know, Ben. <laughs> what are you going to do? You know, I want the cookies. <laughs> I made cookies today that I'm going to uh, actually bake after this. They're currently wow. chilling. Oh man! In the fridge. Nice. We should wrap up soon. <laughs> <laughs> we still have my whole obsession. Yeah. Ben, what kind of cookies? Oh, chocolate, chocolate oh. chip. What did? You, what's the name of your bakeries? Oh, oh uh, dancing magic duckling. D- really? Yeah. Mine's dancing clicker. I renamed mine to Baskin Robbins. <laughs> Baskin Robbins Robbins Bakery. Baskin Robbins Bakery with the apostrophe after the S in Robbins. Wow. Baskin Robbins' Bakery. (laughs) Wow. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Love that. Yeah. It just came to me. It felt good. (laughs) That's really beautiful, honestly. (laughs) Thanks. Just felt good. (laughs) Aaron, what's your obsession? Okay, my obsession will be quick. Don't worry, Ben. <laughs> ben, do you need to like go pop your cookies in the oven? Like, I no, don't want to keep you. I was you. just joking. Oh. Okay, all right. I can take a joke. <laughs> all right. So my <laughs> my obsession is light therapies for this cold dark winter. Oh, I have actually. This is fairly new. I have two light devices that I have just started using this week that I'm hoping will carry me through these two 
dark usually i usually get you know the seasonal sadness mm. kind of i wouldn't i don't say like yeah, I get sad. Seasonal affective disorder, like for sure. Never, not diagnosed or anything. Just like self diagnosed, mm. where I'm just like everything's terrible in February, and I don't ever want to do anything or talk to anybody. Mm. Um, and so I got two things I'm hoping will help me kind of have a nicer January and February. The first thing is um, a, ha- a happy lamp. What's it called? Um, let me look up what these devices are so I can actually talk <laughs> about them. And you know what else? Um, your heart, your heart mode when, huh? when you have a headache. <laughs> <laughs> what? Happy, happy light therapy lamps? Yeah, I got a happy light therapy lamp. So these are um, seasonal effect. These are seasonal. It's a light box, huh. I think is the common name for them. A light therapy box. And so these ha- have like, I mean, I think there's science to back it. Um, they mimic sunlight. It's a special type of, of, of light of, uh, or a special type of lamp that like filters the light so it's safe for your eyes. And you put it ideally at like it's at, sits at a 45 degree angle. You use it in the morning for like depending on the brightness of, of the light between like 20 minutes and, and an hour. And you aim it just to the side of your eyes so that it's – have either of you used one of these before? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So it just sits just to the side of your eyes so that it's shining like – directionally into your eyes but it's not sitting in front of you it's like at an angle Mm. so it's like quite bright and it's it's in your face um and it can it can help counteract the uh, symptoms of like seasonal affective disorder Mm. basically like we're not getting a lot of sunlight in our lives and it just is like pumping your brain full of like sun and happy feelings or something Mm. i I think that's the science behind it (laughs) Um, <laughs> through your eyeballs. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So I've been oh. using that in the morning. Um, and apparently it, within like two weeks, you can start to feel like g- better or good if you're feeling bad. I'm, I'm kind of preemptively getting ahead of it because mm. I know this always happens to me, especially pandemic times. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm reading the preview of this article. I was about to read the sentence because the sentence says a first line clinical standard treatment of SAD, but it says the full sentence is since gaining recognition in, in the 1980s, BLT has become a first line <laughs> clinical standard treatment of SAD. <laughs> which, is a, wow. which is another good, another good uh, therapy, I guess. <laughs> um, the so yeah so that's that's been pretty good so far and i just you know when i get to my desk in the morning i just turn it on and you know have it a bright light in my face for you know 30 minutes to an hour depending huh. and the second one was something my mom bought me this week which is a alarm clock that is a big light that um slowly like you can set you can customize it and everything but it sits like right on your 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 nightstand kind of pointed in the direction of your face and it's uh you 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 can customize it but i have it set for like 20 minutes before my alarm starts it slowly like starts getting brighter and it starts off as like a warm red Mm. light that's, That's just cool. like really cozy, almost like a sunrise. I mean, mm-hmm. it kind of mimics a sunrise for 20 minutes, kind of like right on your nightstand. So that it, and then when my alarm goes off, it's actually just like some birds chirping. Hmm. But then the light is bright there. So it's supposed to help like bring you out of like cue your body before you, you actually like get ripped out of sleep from the alarm that it's like time to wake up and kind of come out of your slumber. Mm. So do you get, um, uh, up before the sun r- rises, like the the real sun. Yeah, it's rough where we are, and I wonder if it's like this for you, Hannah, um, because we're have so many trees around that I don't get up before the sun rises. I get up around like seven thirty or seven twenty, so it is quite dark. But it's also still quite dark too because we just have so many fucking trees that mm. even. When it is light out, it's not like bright mm. in the room. It doesn't get where when I'm like at the beach or like in you know in a city, 
even if you have, unless you have like sun blocking windows, it's like bright AF at like seven thirty. Mm-hmm. It's like really bright. Mm-hmm. But um, so yeah, so that's always a problem for me. Oh, I see. Yeah, because I was thinking, I, I was as you're saying that, I was like, that sounds really cool. I wonder if I should get one of those. And then I was like, hold on. Because actually we have like five windows in our bedroom and, and like yeah, I get that's nice. literally the sun on my head if I stay in bed. Like, it, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's bright no matter where you are in the room in the morning. That but is like nice. if in the, in the, on the weekends, I can't sleep in past like 10 or so because my head starts getting sunburned. Like that's how much sun is coming in. I, <laughs> really? that's, yeah, dreamy yeah. for me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, my spot in the bed is like further from the windows mm. and then it is we're just we've got a lot of trees yeah so it just doesn't get bright it definitely was a thing at our last house for sure when i do when it does get bright i, I like wake up naturally and I'm, i wake up earlier and i feel awake and rested i've always been amazed by that i don't i, I don't i rarely go camping but the times i have gone camping i'm always amazed at how quickly your body mm-hmm. reverts to like wake up at sunrise mm. get sleepy around yeah. the sun goes down Around sun goes down. It's like, um, sun goes down. Sun goes down. I couldn't remember the word. Called sun sun down. Or sundown sun would work too. Yeah. Wow. Oh, man. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. But I, it's very, it's like instant. As like after primal. a day, yeah. you're like, yeah. Yeah. Which sun goes down. <laughs> yeah. So I'm excited. I've only had the alarm clock for two nights. Um, cause it just came midweek and s- the first night I had kind of a restless night's sleep anyway. I definitely was like more awake. Like it was definitely like waking me up on that journey, you know, within those 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. But I didn't feel like, oh, wide awake <laughs> either n- n- night. And it also didn't help me feel like I wanted to get out of my cozy bed <laughs> any <laughs> more. <laughs> So, and Molly was like, "I don't think there's a, an alarm clock for that." Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. just like cozy in my bed. Don't want to go to work. Yeah, I don't really feel like that's gonna do it, but I do feel like it's gonna help. Yeah, with have you I told know, you the dark winter? Does the does the light the the, the light therapy? How many days have you been doing that? Like the one at your desk? Oh, I just started that too. Uh, this week, maybe. F- Four days only because I forgot to do it one day. <laughs> <laughs> and is that like feel feeling good? Um, it's pre- you know both of these things are kind of like preventative. Like I'm not at the point where I'm like feeling sad yet, but I know it's coming. Mm. Tr- you know, so winter is coming, as they say. <laughs> um, uh, I think that's also from the good place. And <laughs> so I haven't felt anything yet but hopefully i won't <laughs> okay cool <laughs> ben what were you gonna ask or say uh oh it's re- a re- relatively common experience in our house to for one of us to just end up in the bed at like any time of the day and just mm-hmm. not want to leave and we say the bed's so good right now <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> we say like a lot. <laughs> I love that. Like, sometimes I'll, I'll wake up in the morning and not want to leave and be like, oh, the bed's just really good right now. <laughs> Bed, bed's so good. Oh, yeah. I was also, today I was, um, I, I stopped work a little early because I worked late every single day this week. Mm. But I, I was like, uh, oh, I want to play Switch. Boo. Oh, boo. Yeah. I was like, I want to play Switch. Uh, I should go play in the bed. But I'm like, man, bed has like, midday bed has like a kind of a sad vibe like you know that's i don't know if do you feel that like if you if you're just like in the bed playing switch it's almost like i'm depressed and i'm in the bed playing switch versus like you're on the couch playing switch you're like i'm doing okay i'm doing good <laughs> playing switch yeah I does that resonate that. with you at all yeah. yeah um i uh when i you know when we lived in our our house it was like 520 square feet I would spend a lot of time on the bed because it was like there was one couch that you could barely stretch out on mm. or there was bed, right? That was it. <laughs> so, like, mm. I am very accustomed to hanging out on my bed at all times yeah. of the day and I love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I love my bed and I love to hang out in there. I feel like there is a uh, – I feel like I'm projecting a mood when I'm 
Because a lot of times when I'm end up in the bed midday, it's because I like, can't even. And so catch me in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> but it is convenient because like Henry just loves hanging out in the bed with me. If he he'll run from across the house if he hears me get in bed. Oh. He's like, "Fuck yeah, we're doing this!" <laughs> but I, it's let's just, go get me under there. <laughs> it's probably better, like for sleep habits, to do what you guys do than what I do. Because, <laughs> like, I mean, I'm a really good Bed's sleeper, so good. but like, it, yeah. but like, I think it's probably better to not have like a lot of midday bed associations. If I, you I don't generally have a problem, agree. Don't make a problem, right? With the midday bed association, but also sometimes the bed's just really. Sometimes good. the bed's really. The good. bed's so nothing, good. It's just like nothing you can do. About Can't it. deny it. <laughs> Can't fucking deny that good bed. Well, I hope that those so things those are my things. work for you. Continue to work for you. Um, Ian had yeah. a, Ian had a light like that, and not as fancy. I don't think it. I don't know if it did colors. It wasn't that big. And the other thing was, it was also in our old house, and so he didn't have like a bedside table. So he tried to stick it to the wall, and then it would just <laughs> fall down in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> That'll wake you up. <laughs> yeah, not when you want to wake up though. <laughs> so. Yeah, this is like a Phillips brand. If that helps anybody, nice. Nice. And shout out to my mom if she's listening. That's very nice. Shout out. What's it called? What's it called? Philip's Smart Sleep know. Wake Up Light. Philip's Smart Sleep. Smart Sleep Wake Up Light. Smart, smart sleep. sleep Wake sleep, Up Light. Wake Up Light. Let me see what this baby Phillip's looks like. Philip's Smart Sleep. Ooh, wake that's up pretty. Up. It's a that's a pretty guy. <laughs> Yeah, it's got like a it's smart. It just it just like sunrises. Sleep wake up like. <laughs> and pre- and pretty bird noises. Pretty. It's nice cuz the wake past up. two nights I, I I just I just have it set to birds. You could do other things. I like it like goes on birds for a minute and it, then I wake up. It's like so gentle that like part of my brain is like I don't think those are real birds. <laughs> and then I wake up. <laughs> <laughs> I think the one that they're showing as a competitor in this video on Amazon is the one that we have. But what that's that's fine. Whatever. It's a smart sleep wake up line. Okay, let's do homework. Good one, Aaron. Those are very helpful tips for people who have diagnosed or undiagnosed seasonal affective disorder. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or just get a little gloomy in the winter. That's I think that me- is what that means. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. Ben, what's your homework for the people? My homework is to watch someone you love play eSport. <laughs> 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 or I guess play it yourself if you're some kind of nerd who likes video games. Uh, East Ward. That ain't me, though. You mean? Sorry. East sorry. Ward. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, any social medias? Twitter, nicely proved Ben. Twitch, just go Greg. Nice. That's that's all, folks. That's all. That's I'm all. on I'm on LinkedIn at my real name. <laughs> <laughs> um, if oh, you had a work anniversary. I almost commented it on like, congrats on having a job, and then I thought that's a little. <laughs> It's like this is like a place of business. <laughs> I know, right? Like that is so fucking weird. It's so weird. I know. It's so weird. Uh, can't but be myself happy here. Happy to connect with any listener. <laughs> LinkedIn is like a website you have to put a bra on to go to. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, my homework is you can watch Euphoria on HBO or HBO Max is where I watch it. Um, steal your parents' HBO Max password and then use it to watch Euphoria is what I do. <laughs> um, and, uh, again, just a warning, like, it can be a little intense sometimes. Um, hold on, I just have to write this down. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. <laughs> what happened to you there? <laughs> I'm fine, I'm fine. Um, I just have to write this down. <laughs> I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Anthropology. I'm on TikTok at Hannah and her cats. Um, cat update. They're still in their little room, uh. but they're doing great. And, um, I would say uh, Moose is really warming up to me, who's the little tabby girl and the big, uh, black kitty whose name is Hank now is 
Um, mm. Gaining confidence, if not affection. So that's good. Yeah. Um, I'm happy with, with their progress. And Great. the intro process with Squeaks has been really um, moving along. So actually, Great. I'm going to do that right after this, probably. Um, yes, that's my socials. Um, Aaron, what's your homework? My homework is check out a light box if you feel like that's something that could help you through January or February. If you're feeling sad around the edges, try it out. You know, I don't know yet if it's something that'll work for me, but I'm excited to see. And then also, if you feel like can't get up in the morning, bed's so good, (laughs) it won't make your bed Mm. bad, but it might help you wake up, Mm. is one of those lights for alarm sleep. (laughs) Wait, sunrise, (laughs) bird chirps. Sleep, wake up. Phillips, sweet, sweet, sweet little wake up. (laughs) <laughs> sweet, sweet little wake up lantern. <laughs> Did you say lantern? <laughs> I said lantern. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've ever said in my life. <laughs> sweet little wake up sweet lamp. Wake up lamp. <laughs> if <coughs> all right, if you want to email us, what happened in my throat? Um, if, COVID. If you want to, I do want to. I do want to email us what happened to my throat. Please hold. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to email us, don't do that yet because I haven't gotten to that part yet. If you want to call us, leave us a voicemail that is uh, has like speaking in it. Um, you can do that at seven seven four three two six zero four twenty. Blaze it! Blaze it! But, uh, or you can text that number too. Um, if you want to follow us on Twitter, we're at Too Broad Pod on Twitter. We're at Way Too Broad on Instagram. You can email us about what happened to your throat or your obsession this week or ghosts versus zombies at way too broad at gmail.com. And if you missed any of that or you're looking for a link or you're looking for our socials and stuff, all of that is at our website at waytoobroad.com or waytoobod.com or name yourself jame.com for anything you want. Earnben.com for anything you need. Maxfun.org for a sweet dog on a boat that'll just make you take you right back to the summertime. Um, thank you to Eamon for writing our intro and outro music and a whole song in the middle of it. Um, follow them on uh, Twitter at AEMYN on Bandcamp, AEMYN.bandcamp.com. Um, and that's it. So thanks for listening. Bye. Stay safe out there. The podcast candle whoop, is now <laughs> a blend blend. Distinguished. <laughs> Distinguished. Bye. 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 Bye.